Hey guys, this is Maynak and you're watching Civil Bro. So today we'll design a building in Tech Structure with them. This is basically a G plus uh, two building and you can see the plan here. Print level and for the ground floor slab. And uh, for the tech line, you need to create a center line out of it. So this is the center line for tech line in which all the particular uh, you know center lines you can see here this should be in a particular layer and all the remaining things can be put in a different layer suppose let's say uh, i'm just putting all this in uh, layer zero you can do that okay and after that you just use the command d except you know out and save this in d except 2000 format and center line for tech so i've already done that so uh, and you can see the unit of this is in meters you can see this so we'll use the unit meters as well. So first of all, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll make the construction levels model, go to construction levels and in insert below. And uh, this foundation level plus paint level, it is 2.1. So it is below, so minus. And insert above, we'll go with approximately uh, 11 feet. So it is 3.3 meters, 150 mm slab, let's take, because it's in R feet, so on five, and this is SSL structural slab level, and we'll go one, two. So this is uh, G plus one, G plus two, okay? And then uh, this is just click on okay. So here in the structure, you have this levels here. If you double click, this will be the plinth level, and uh, we'll import our data file in the plinth level here. Center line for Tecla, we already uh, just take the center line here. As an artificial grid unit is mm. And uh, click on next and by layer in all the floors. You can just copy this, finish. And after that, the uh, import DXF once again, center line for Tecla again. And unit is obviously meter. And don't need the center line layer this time as a shadow. You can import this here. So once this shadow has been imported, your majority things are done for the importing part. So we have the center line now. So now we'll place our, uh, you know, your columns, right? So let's place our columns here. So we'll take column here and uh, uh, we will define a column here, okay? So let's take a column of size 400 into 400. Or look, let's take 350 to 350 first, right? 350 into 350 and then click on OK. And then, uh, 500D, FE500 just will take for now, FE500, okay, and uh, normal cover 40 mm, and uh, in this use automatic alignment grouping, it's okay, automate auto design is okay, gravity automatic alignment, turn it off, and we'll save, this will be C, uh, 350, cross 350, and uh, okay, okay, so, Okay, this grade of concrete is M20. This is okay for now. So now I'll just select the set here, C to 350 to 350. So first of all, let's uh, select the points here where you have the columns and then we can check. So one, two, three, four. Uh, check uh, from here. Actually. So first, uh, you have columns along all the course. Only in this location, you don't have column, and all the remaining we have columns here. So we'll just do this and this and this and this. This and this, so we'll check with the center line from here. If all the things are correct or not, right? So, all the columns are being assigned in the proper position, and now uh, we will do the beams. So, select the beam, and after that. Uh, you can also see in the structure 3D, by the way, the column positions. You can see this like this. And uh, in the structure 3D, oh, sorry, in the plinth level, we go back to plinth level. We'll define the beams here, 250 to 350. Let's provide for the plinth level. Click on OK. And then, uh, and then, it's the grade of 
steel with ZP500. And after having done that, just uh, save this and uh, it will be uh, PB250 cross 350. And this will be it. And after that, I'll select this PB and then just like this. So everything is joined here. You can see in the structure 3D, the plinth level is done. Now in the structure 3D, I'll just make this supports, default supports as, I first of all select this and we'll make them as fixed. So all the ends will be fixed here. And so they are only remaining. Okay, all the ends are fixed now. Okay, if something, anything is remaining, then select them all, okay. And I'll just try to do and select them all, okay. And make them as fixed, fixed, okay. So one, this is done, right? So one, one is done. we'll just uh, go back and copy this floor to the next level. For that, we'll go to construction levels. And then we'll just make this floor as base and then click on OK. And then uh, after having done that, we'll just go to structure one and uh, we will take these slab on beams. So uh, here we have a staircase. So we'll avoid this part and the remaining part. Uh, we will just provide the slab. Okay, in the places where we have the slab. So we'll, so that you can take the load here. You can see here. Uh, we have a staircase here in the plinth level and plinth level actually we don't have any uh, staircase here so we can provide this uh, slabs here also for the plinth level okay uh, yes yes uh, i think we need a secondary beam here okay so i'll just take a beam and uh, pv 350 go between 350 and join this particular beam and then we can do slab on beams on uh, this as well, okay. Uh, okay, this is this is structure one, so there will be you know, slabs here. Okay, we will need those two panels. Now it's okay. In the plinth level also. You see, uh, this is the case, and it is all right. Okay, so we'll just validate the model just in case if there is any error. Okay, there is no error till now. So. So what happened is, you know, I uh, forgot to select a uh, dissimilar floor. So that's why uh, just make this back as unique. Okay. So in the plane level, we don't need these slabs actually. So I'll just select this and delete. But I should have just uh, clicked unique right away. That's why this problem arised. No problems. So just delete this from the plane level. And this is okay in the next level, okay? So I'll just validate the model and check all, all is green, so everything is okay. So we have the ground floor, we have the first floor, and uh, and let's do, you know, one more floor of this, right? So, so we'll go here, one more floor, construction levels, and this one, I'll make this as one, and then click on okay. And quickly, I'll go back and make this as unique. And then click on OK. So the next floor also, I'll just do this and click this as uh, 2. And then click on OK. And then go back and then click on Unique and click on OK. So the only difference in the last floor, just go to structure 3D. Here in last close, we have a panel here. There is slab, the staircase actually ends here, and here we have a headroom. So, for the headroom, let's have a look at the columns here. Which columns we can extend for the uh, actual headroom here? Okay, so I think we can extend this uh, all these uh, six columns. So, uh, first of all, I uh, will go to construction levels and we'll add a level above. And this spacing need, don't need to be that much. 2.8 meter is enough for that. 2.8 meter and we'll select all these uh, six uh, columns of this particular staircase. So you can also do it in the structure 3D as well. So we have uh, one, two, 
Okay, this one should not be selected. Central line is no something. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I think this six are the columns. Okay, no, it's not selected the wrong wrong columns. Okay. So actually these these six are there. One check this time. Okay. Whether we have a slab here. Okay, this is the right one. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So these are the columns and topmost level I'll just do this as four. So this is extended up to this much and we'll go to the topmost level, double click here. And this is the topmost level. We'll go to the beam and I'll select the beam here. Okay. And I'll just provide this like this, right? So once this is done, I'll just do the slab on beams and provide the slab here like this. So this is the structure here. Uh, but I think that you know I should increase the size of the beam uh, in this uh, in the, all in the remaining levels. But let's see. So this is the uh, structure as you can see. This is nice uh, shape uh, to the structure here. Let's uh, do the loading here. Seismic load, seismic wizard, and uh, uh, so ignore seismic bit of the plinth level, and uh, we'll do uh, zone five. And type two importance vector one is own vector point is it takes what they take them automatically. So we have you know we'll have to use the uh, model response spectrum analysis and this is RC moment resisting frame without any machinery inputs. No, this is not correct. It is all other buildings actually, all other buildings. Because we have masonry infills here and time period they will take automatically. Don't need to calculate this. Otherwise, we, should, we should, would have calculated this. Moment frame systems, moment frame systems, and we consider ductility. So we'll go with SMRF and SMRF. And uh, then obviously the all the imposed and live load will be taken into consideration. And uh, for the imposed load, that, that is 0.25% is taken. Uh, you know. Uh, because uh, if, if we are considering uh, up to three, that's 0.25 will be taken. Okay, so then click on next and uh, you can store it if check is okay and then click on finish. So this will be operating next, next and finish. So this is seismic load basically defined, but let's assign the loads first. <clears throat> so let's go to plane level here for the dead load. And we are taking full UDL and we are taking uh, 14. And uh, let's divide this. Let's take again full UDL 14 and then let's provide. So we have to provide one by one, but make sure you provide in a in a manner in which you remember that whether you provide it or not. There is no way here where you can select everything and provide. So you have to be a little bit patient in this case. Instead, actually, you can select all the beams at once and assign to all the beams. So that's a good option instead. So this is done and there is no slab here. So no uh, live load. So ne next flow, first of all, next floor, I'll just go and apply for the dead load and the same process, put UDL and take 14 okay, and apply.
Okay, then we'll go to the level load and we'll apply float finish load 0 0.5 for the dead load of the tiles or any flooring. Then we'll go to live load and then we'll apply uh, level load of uh, 2. And then we'll go to structure 3D and you'll see this is the dead load and this is the imposed load. So now for the next floor, this is similar. So only for the next floor, you can copy model construction levels and make this two as, uh, as so you know, this one, this one will do as one and then click on OK. So it will copy to the next floor and then make quickly this as unique. So the loading is done now for this three floors, last floor it is remaining. So let's go and finish the loading of the last floor. Okay, so if you just click here, it will be the top view here. So first of all, the dead load and uh, go to load and full UDL and uh, parabet one load, let's skip three. Okay, so, yeah, so I think, okay, uh, I think I missed something uh, that the balcony portion in these uh, remaining floors, uh, I missed this in these two floors. So let's uh, correct this, okay. In structure one, okay, since it is not symmetrical, you know, so okay, it has a balcony. So you see here um, for the center line, let's see, we have a balcony here at 1.452 and 1.452 here. So uh, in this, we'll just go to model and then we'll go to this construction level and parallel quick and we'll just do this here click on f2 and 1.452 uh, enter and again click on escape and select this and f2 1.452 enter this happened or not yes and let's do it again Parallel quick F2 1.452 enter. So this is done, and uh, we have to extend the beams here. So select the beams and uh, select the size here. The size is already selected. So we put to go like this. All the primary beams will join with the portion where we have the cantilever. The cantilever part is sometimes tricky, but we do have to. Let's see in 3D and check whether I'm giving it in the right direction or not. Yes, I think yeah. I think uh, I'm giving it in the right direction. Yes, uh, this is in the right direction. So uh, dead load uh, post term and uh, loading full UDL of let's say uh, three for the parapet wall. I'll just impose along the boundary here okay. for the parapet wall or the balcony. See. So I what you can do, you can go to the structure three D and uh, the model has been changed here. So we don't want to copy the loading, but let we I think we have to 
do it okay so let's go to this model and first of all concentration levels make this two as one and then click on okay and then we are done here and then uh, go to construction levels and make them as unique and then click on okay so this floor we are done okay so next floor also i'll just copy and then later delete the things which i don't want make them two and make them okay and construction levels and make it as unique so loading i have to change in this floor structure three okay structure three loadings let's see the, the loadings here first of all i do have to click on escape and select and delete all the possible loads here uh, because i have to assign uh, remaining loads control control and uh, select this and delete okay and then control and select control and select this and this and this and delete and here here we good so here uh, we'll just put the top view and yeah we have a slab here and dead load for the dead load go to loads go to full udl and this is three so we'll apply it along the fourth portion where you have the Parapet walls. Okay. Okay, done. And for this portion, I'll just apply 12 because there will be a 10 inch wall here. So this portion we can apply 12. So this is the loading here and live load let it give. So you have the post load and the sorry dead load and the post load here on the structure like this. So this building has uh, loading has been completed. We'll go to load uh, seismic load seismic wizard and let's change this in case because I just applied the load again and uh, just check. Okay, everything is okay. Finish. And then uh, load combinations also operating next, next, and finish. And then we'll go to the load and combination, and then we'll just click on generate and then operating scenario and next, and then uh, just click on next and finish. And then okay. So then you can go to design, and uh, I can just click on design or static. And we'll see what is the results which are opening, and we'll try to make this uh, plan safe. So let's see the analysis results. So yeah, so uh, I think this is a satisfactory design and I told you this warning comes in when you design by IS code of this, uh, but we are good here. And let's see the ratio, partial good ratio and the utilization ratio. So utilization ratio you can see all are within the range. So I guess the uh, columns will have a pretty Good, you know, design here. 8016 is for the columns here, and uh, uh, this is this is also 8016. Okay, utilization ratio is maximum for this blue one. So let's take a blue beam here and check member static. And we have this 2T12, 2T16, 1616. So it's quite a uh, economic design you can say and uh, i'm pretty much satisfied with the design yeah 16 16 12 12 and uh, yeah so previously when i designed was stat pro and that was a different uh, column position but it the design was very much uneconomical i have to say but i have you know, increased the number of columns and uh, you can see uh, we have a very much economic design so that's the uh, thing which change which column positioning simple thing as column positioning can do so that's the uh, design for you and for you watch till now make sure like it really helps uh, me so and uh, keep learning bye, -bye.